Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle part five of my bookshelf tour. Now this is another selection of art books, comic books, and much, much more. So let's just go through it. This one is a superb one. I love these sort of things. This is the Cartoonists and Illustrators Portfolio Volume 2. Full of some great artwork all the way through. Just a catalog from, an, well, a portfolio. And it's just great. Picked it up because of the Bernie Wrights and really beautiful artwork all the way through as well as of course brilliant back cover there as well and next one this one i haven't read because sometimes people say have you read every single book no of course not. some quite a lot of them i've read years and years ago and I have, but i must admit buzzsaw i have yet to read i'm certain it's great i've read some roy crane over the years and superb artwork and this one's the sultry sultry's tiger this is volume two a lovely book really nice it's all in black and white so it's all the way through it's all newspaper strips just beautiful book but i haven't read it yet i have to say just dipped into a few of them some look quite good but it's only a limited amount of time to read all these sort of collections you can see the details there and this is from yeah, again fantagraphic books this is volume two i probably will never buy any other volumes i, I assume they all still in print maybe not maybe sort of thing you probably can find at comic conventions, etc. This one, well, I'm going to be honest, I haven't read this one. And there is a reason. Not because I I just can't read it, because it's in German. And my German is <laughs> hopeless. So this one is Alex Raymond, Rip Kirby, 1953-54. Why did I buy it? Well, just superb artwork. I love, and it's so hard to get, UK versions. So I saw a German copy. I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get... In, and it's still absolutely superb artwork all the way through. Beautiful black and white, but it is, of course, all the text is in German. Unless I got a German dictionary out and start trans going through it all, translate it. No, I'm not going to do that. But it's still pretty impressive book. And this is from a company called Bacola. So you can just see there. Again, you might be able to find copies of Rip Kirby in English. Probably similar, but I certainly have struggled to find any really lovely, reasonably affordable collections of Rip Kirby. But it's a nice quality book, this one. Da Die Completen Comic Strips. I'm probably even saying it completely wrong. And it says there, uh, Band 6, so I assume Volume 6. I'm guessing on that. <laughs> I might be completely wrong. This one is superb. Canif. Real nice. Now this looks... When you first pick it up, you think this is going to be like some Victorian art book or something, you know, one of these real sort of super comprehensive 100 years of history of art, because it looks real quite, it's got a real nice quality feel. This is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And this is from, yeah, again, IDW. They bring out so many great books. I love this one. But I don't know if there was a wraparound for it. There might have been at some point, but certainly the copy I've got, I haven't got it, but it is really, really nice. And it is glorious. They are visual biography all the way through. It's obviously colour and black and white. Lots and lots of examples all the way through of his work. And obviously comic book pages and much, much more. Really impressive. It's a real thick, chunky book. You can see it's a, and it actually weighs a ton. Again, I'm not certain if it's in or out of print. It's possible you can find copies of it still. I'm just guessing on that. Now this one... Um, for some weird reason, I seem to have picked up a batch of books, German, French, whatever. And here's another one, French one. Canon by Wally Wood, or Wallace Wood, as it says there. Now, I just noticed it's actually missing page one and two. But I did buy it for about 50p, so I'm not really complaining. But it's a really superb artwork. It's, of course, black and white all the way through. But it is in French. So if you, of course, get a copy of this, or obviously you can get it probably in English as well. But I've never found copies of Canon particularly affordable. So it was one of those ones where I saw, oh, I'll get a copy of that. Even though it's in French, I can just about read the French. So it's not too bad. So you can see there, cheese. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. This one is superb. The artwork is a bit repetitive. I suppose you could probably, a lot of people are not too keen on Bern Hogus. I quite like his work. I must admit, I'm really, but I found the stories, I should say the stories more than the artwork. Obviously, the artwork is very similar all the way through. But the stories sort of ended up sort of, you got obviously a village being attacked by something, then they get attacked again by another group of people, and then get attacked by another evil person that comes along, who then joins forces with it, and so on. There was a sort of like, you think, hmm, it seems to be a sort of 
story, but they're really good. Obviously, all the collected strips. Very nice quality book, this one. And this is in the City of Gold, Don Garden there. Now, I don't know what volume it is, probably. Oh, this is a Titan Books one. This is Titan Books. Nice, very sizable, very... Obviously, I assume the original pages must have been bigger than this, probably even glossier, I would say. But it was full of some great artwork. Obviously, you've got all the lines there. He tackled lines quite a lot in this book, and obviously gorillas turn up, etc. Usual sort of things. But this is a very nice... Oh, this is the first volume. That's it here, the first volume. I don't know where I got this. I think I got this up at uh, Forbidden Planet, probably part of their sales selection. They they had a collection of these sort of burned Hogarth ones just piled up for about five or something. I thought, you know what? I haven't got any of his work before. And this one is... Oh, this is the first volume of the complete Burn Hogarth comic strip library. And then it says here, continuing Hal Foster's original story. Okay, so that's a bit confusing about that. And you've got that one there. Still... Obviously, that's got a selection of stories. I actually found them quite reasonable, but in a sense, they, the stories were a bit not. But this one, Karl Barks and the Art of Comic Book. I love this one. Absolutely brilliant. Superb. You can see my Michael Barrier. Obviously, Karl Barks on the back. And it's just full of lots and lots of information. All the various books and comics and everything associated with Karl Barks. Just absolutely amazing black and white it's black and white all the way through but still really packed solid if you're a fan of Karl Barks I think this is a probably a must-have you can see it's a soft paperback version very nice quality one again I think this is one I just picked up at Comic Mart for next to nothing this one's lovely I love peanuts and this one's a golden celebration now I can't say I've read every single story Again, some people put comments saying, have you read all of them? No, I haven't read every single Peanut story. <laughs> There's lots of Peanut stories. I love the Christmas ones. Quite often, what I'm very selective. So I'll just go through and think, oh, so you can see there's some colour in here. You've also got, got really sharp, very high quality black and white. Tons of other bits and pieces about. But it's mainly lots and lots of strips all the way through. And it's just, of course, honours the momentous 50th anniversary of Charlie Brown. Very nice quality book, this one. So, Peanuts, a golden celebration. The art and the story of the world. Not much particularly about the story, obviously, but obviously you've got the actual strips themselves, which, of course, are great. Though I love the way that's crunched. That's very odd. I hadn't noticed that. I'm certain that was there was a purpose to it. The way it's just crunched up against the edge. Peanuts just against that. Obviously, they're celebrations. And then quite a bit of space there. Strange, not centering it. Again, I'm certain there is a reason. Ah, oh, another Tarzan one. This one, I don't know which volume this one is. This one I haven't read yet. Read the other one. This one I haven't read. Tarzan versus the Barbarians. Oh, I might have read. The stories are all very similar. I'm, I probably, again, dipped into it. No, it doesn't look familiar. So this one, Tarzan versus the Barbarians. Again, Burn Hogarth. And this one uh, is volume two. Got us a bit of luck. Got volume one and volume two. I don't know how many more volumes there were of this uh, collection. It's again, Titan Books, you can see there. It's nice, very nice, thick quality book. Absolutely brilliant. And these again, the, the comic book strips of newspaper strips. And this one, you can see the stories there that includes. So 1940 all the way through to 1943. The Tarzan comic strips. Oh, it says comic strips. But still, see newspaper strips. Maybe that, that's what they mean. I don't know. That's what they look like, newspaper strips. I might be completely wrong. Now, I love these. These stories are absolutely amazing. I've got the first one. And I then I thought, oh, you know what? Palestine one. This one, Footnotes in Gaza. I've yet to read it. I read the first one, the Palestine one, which was absolutely amazing. A real, the artwork is just absolutely superb all the way through it. It's just real, black and white. But what a quality, quality read. Thoroughly enjoyable. From the greatest cartoonist reporter, sweeping original investigation. Really fascinating book. So you can see there, lots of the details. Really worth checking out. And I don't know who this is by. I can't make out the company. There's the uh, thing there. So footnotes in Gaza. That's a brilliant book. This one, well, it will be. I'm certain it's going to be brilliant. The first one was brilliant. I'm certain that one is going to be just as good. This one is The Studio. I've wanted this one for years and years and years. I've read it years and years ago. This just a classic. Barry Windsor Smith, a load of Jeffrey Jones, Michael Kaluta, Barry Windsor Smith and Bernie Wrightson. They formed the studio and they brought out this amazing book. And I remember at the time it coming out, was it 
very expensive book, really luxurious book. My mate had a copy and I remember just picking it off his shelf and reading it there. I thought, oh, wow, that's brilliant. I would love to get a copy of that. And then mysteriously, just suddenly saw a copy in my local shop, Oxfam shop. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to have that book because it was excellent. But it's just full of just beautiful artwork all the way through. Just quality book. Very, very nice square bound. Obviously, Barry Windsor Smith and much, much more. This is just brilliant. I've done a review already. So again, always please mention below in the comments if you want a particular book to be reviewed. But I have gone through the studio before. So, uh, but you can see just quality art all the way through. I don't know when it was. It was obviously, the 70s. Just amazing book. This one's lovely. Star Wars, Marvel, IDW, the classic newspaper comics by Al Williamson. Just a beautiful book. Now, I've got, a, I think I've got another volume of this somewhere. So I've got two volumes. I might be wrong on that. But I've got quite a few of these Star Wars books. Got lots of the Marvel ones. But this one is Marvel and IDW again. Yet again, IDW. And you can see there, it's just full of some black and white, some superb black and white, as well as colour as well. And of course, done in that standard landscape format, which is very nice. But you can see there the Goodwin Williamson strips. Just really great, great little stories. Mega fan of all those Star Wars guys, probably more so than some of the films. This is a fascinating film book. Inside Warner Brothers, 1935-1951. The battles, the brainstorms, the bickering, and so much more from the files. Now, a lot of the early files were lost, so it doesn't obviously go further back than 1935, but it's just fascinating reading all about like Robin Hood and all of the films, just going through, it's just, it's obviously, there's not many pictures or anything, but it's just basically letters and memos and records going backwards and forwards. And it's fascinating, all the things that happen, we're gonna do this, we're gonna have this actor in, then suddenly, mysteriously, he's not in it, or she's not in it, and so on. And you've got someone else instead. You know, you think, oh, would that have been better as a film? You know, certain actors, put forward for Robin Hood, you know, Errol Flynn, you can't imagine now not being Errol Flynn. But of course, at some point, often that is the case, that they obviously have someone else. And this book is just full of just so much information about it. Every page is filled with insights and revelations. A really enjoyable read, I must admit. Brilliant. Well, there's this one as well, Classic Penguins, cover to cover. This is an art design book more than anything. This is just full of just beautiful, beautiful artwork. Lots of great think. Wow, all the designers involved, all the processes, why they did certain things. And this is Classic Penguin, cover to cover. Uh, just beautiful, edited with an introduction by Paul Buckley. Of course, standard, brilliant quality from Penguin. And you've got people like Mike Mignola, James Franco, and many others. Some just beautiful artwork all the way through, a visual celebration of the covers from Penguin Classics. Really beautiful book, and it just feels quality. This is a quality book, just love it. Nice, this one's, whatever that is, <laughs> something falling down there. However, the American comic book catalogue, the evolutionary era. This is quite an unusual read. Now this is not perhaps for everyone, but this is the evolutionary era, 1884 to 1939. Loads and loads of information about early newspaper strips, comic book strips, etc. Just stacks things like Bringing Up Father, Mutton Jeff, cartoon books. It's just full and full of information that probably only Dennis Gifford, because he obviously had vast collections of things. Just amazing, just amazing collection. And it says he's the first ever reference book to trace the history and development of the world's most popular form. Just brilliant, brilliant book. But certainly not probably for everyone, but if you're interested in all these sort of things and you want to find out more information, things like this one, I'm just going to pick New Fun. So you've got here New Fun, the big comic magazine. Obviously it's got here about contents of number one and then also got the first editorial information about that and much, much more. So it's the New Comics, another one, of course, that was brought out by DC, one of their very, very early ones. And every time I see that, I'm always pained the fact that I could have bought that one for relatively nothing. New Comics issue one. <laughs> anyway, was, I saw a copy of it one time. I didn't know anything about it. Cover was torn and my mate said, you must buy it. You know, I was thinking, I don't know. It's the first the first DC comic or something said, which is not strictly totally true, but still, it's a particular type of first issue. And I... Uh, Anyway, it was gone, of course, the next time I went back. But it's one of those ones I think bugs me every time I see a picture of it. 
This one, The World of Flame, absolutely fascinating. This is really amazing. The Long War, 1914 to 1945. And it is full of just staggeringly amazing pictures, all in colour. They've been colourised and done very, very well. Lots of information as well, tonnes and tonnes of information about all the events building up, obviously, to the First and Second World War. So you've got 1914, 45, and obviously in between as well. Just amazing, all the pictures, all colourised, obviously in a different way than they were when they were originally done. And I love this book. You've got characters like this. I mean, just really worth checking out these sort of books. I've seen a few of these sort of ones. This is a book, it's a journey through the deadly but fascinating years from 1914 to 1945. 200 original photographs and all originally shot in black and white. And it is quite fascinating when you see them in colour. Now, there's a lovely series of videos that I love watching where someone's colourised them and really smart, sort of made them into sort of 4K. And they're really weird watching them. You sort of watch them and there's something surreal. But I love watching those, though. They're really fascinating because it suddenly brings some whole world apart, you know, sort of life. And you think, wow, some 1920s. And that's a sort of similar sort of thing. Just fascinating. And I think it's just going to probably get better and better because I still think the restoration pictures never really look as good as they probably could be. I'm certain they could really make them look, you know, as if now kind of thing. Maybe that would be pushing it a bit too far. Maybe with a bit of AI, I'm certain AI will go into it, make it even more surreal and odd. This one is, I love books about Soho. This Christmas I got a book from a mate about Soho and I, it was great, which I hadn't got. So it was fascinating to get and read through that and I just thought, wow. Unfortunately, didn't mention anything about Dark They Were and Golden Eyed in Soho. One of my favorite shops, the, for me, my first comic shop, and uh, but no mention there. Strange. Showed lots of pictures and maps and things that were great. And this one, John Deakin, lots and lots of photographs around the 1950s. Very nice quality book. I got this one at the National Gallery. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, I must get that because it's got lots of lovely sort of things where you sort of see all the books, the earlier books, which I always enjoy. And also magazines, lots of sort of magazine sort of pages is always quite fascinating obviously you can see there it's not particularly about obviously every picture about so it's not all the streets but it's also pictures about the people and also information letters and things that they wrote just fascinating john deakin of course he took loads of photographs and it is it has got a number of really nice images of soho but it's more the personalities the people around at the time so you can see their pictures there so really nice book very sizable book, really nice quality. This one is lovely. Wonder Woman, The Complete History. Well, obviously it can never be The Complete History because of course this was done quite a few years ago and it is amazing. Les Daniels, as always, really quality book, full of just amazing material. Now obviously it's the, there, so let's just, you can see the actual, there, the cover itself. And there's the back as well. She's invincible, she's strong, she is Wonder Woman, etc. 200 dazzling colour photographs, archive. Some really nice bits in here. Some stuff that I've never seen anywhere else. Of course, you've got some stories as well. But actually, which are quite nice. But this sort of thing, it's really nice. The Sensation Comics. Now, they did bring out recently DC Comics, one of the Wonder Woman in the 50s. And it was full of these sort of stories, very unusual stories. And this one does so indicate quite a few. Like Also, sadly, they never printed that. Astra. I would love to see a collection of Astra. Of course, it was in the Sensation Comics back in the 50s. I don't think there were many issues. That's probably the reason why she sort of completely vanished. I don't know if she's ever been resurrected. Someone will say, yes, there's a whole series of comics about Astra that came out in the 80s or 90s or something. I don't know. Now, I love doing comic books. I do my own comic books, designs. I'm always, I've never published anything yet. One day, maybe, maybe never. But anyway, I still love doing them. And I still love drawing. So, Essential Guide to Comic Book Lettering. And this is a fascinating read all the way through. It's just full of hundreds and hundreds of examples and information about how it's best to do it, all the programs, techniques, ideas about how to do it. And obviously, just great. Very, very interesting read. If, of course, you were like me, love drawing and those sort of things, these sort of books are just great. I mean, I've picked up so many over the years of these sort of letters. But this one, I really think this is an image comic one is probably one of my favourite ones for lettering. I've got a few other ones that are more sort of fonts and sort of computer graphics sort of ones. But this one, I 
found this a really nice little book and turned very lots and lots of information about lettering. So what's next? Oh, this one's a great book. Now I haven't read this one. This one is volume two. I read volume one. I loved volume one. And I will get around to reading this at some point. I'm quite certain. But it is a thick, chunky read. A Life of Picasso. There's three volumes in the series by John Richardson. Very nice quality books. I mean, these are just absolutely brilliant. So this is volume two. Really must buy volume three. Probably is out of print. I don't know. It's well out of print. I'm certain. But this one here, oh, it's even got a little uh, touring exhibition stuck in there. So I'll move that out of the way. But it's just full of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of examples of his art. Now, not always the biggest of things, obviously a lot of text in there. You can see some, obviously some pictures there. All thing. But you can see it's fairly small, a small example. So I imagine that a lot of people would say, oh, I don't like it because I, of course you can find lots and lots of mega sized books about Picasso. But this has of course got a lot more sort of text about his life. It's a, it's a biography. It's a biography more than showing the imagery. But there are obviously, you can see there, lots of examples. And as it says here, John Richardson's second volume of Picasso confirms his first suggested masterpiece in the making, the most illuminating biography. And it certainly is, it's absolutely impressive. But again, if you're coming to it, expecting lots and lots of pictures, by Picasso, ones that you've never seen before, etc. Obviously, they're small examples, but not particularly, obviously, huge, huge examples. Now, this one is a very odd book. I love, like, German Expressionist, and this one is very odd. Eavesdropper on an Age. Ludwig Meidner, I don't know how to pronounce his name, in exile. Black and white colour. There's, there's lots and lots of great, more sort of like comic book style, very unusual style. But it's full of just loads of great art all the way through. And I sort of, you see the sort of illustrations there. Very strange, but just brilliant. Apocalypse, the city, war, religion. And it's from Herma Publishers. I love Herma Publishers. That's one website I, I quite often look at. I go on into it and look and see, have they bought out something new? Because they're always bringing out really well-priced, and I think really good-priced books but also quality books, which is, of course, a really great thing. It's not like super expensive because quite art books often can be insanely expensive. And you think, really? I go past lots of art shops in, in London and I look in the window. Some of you think, that's a lot of money. And I always remember Zwemers. I think it was called Zwemers. And that was full of books that were just amazingly expensive. And art books always have that sort of thing. And I do find that their books, the Herma Publishers, but they do pretty bring out some really unusual books. And I've picked up quite a few over the years now. And I think, wow, I love them. It's a real nice quality one, that one. This one's Comics Collectible. An unusual one. I love collectible, sort of these comic collectible ones. Not because I collect. Because I, I know you probably say, well, you must collect. Well, I don't collect in terms of thinking, oh, that's going to be worth millions. But it'd be nice, of course. I suspect none of my books will be worth millions. Most of them are all tatty. But this one is just full of, com I love comic book price guides, especially old ones. Obviously the classic Overstreet ones. Over the years I've had quite a few of the Overstreet ones, demolished them, I've written all over them. And so all that looks good information. And this one is, well, it's more 90s sort of thing. It's got lots of the figures and other things. And also many, obviously, long time ago, 1940s ones, Mechanical Herman, Popeye ones, loads and loads of examples. And it's of course got the prices and things completely wrong now i mean this must be, i don't know when this was about 1990s so it's obviously 30 odd years out of date i suspect but it is still an impression oh 1994 my apologies so you can see there there's details there but it's still always fascinating and i have got like I say, a few price guide books that they're always just nice to look through and quite often i love looking on facebook and people put price guides on there from like 1960s and you look at like hulk issue one 10 pence you think, oh, that would have been great. Obviously, when it came out, it was less than that. So, but still, this is an amazing book. The Art of the Simon and Kirby Studio. Now, there's a whole series of horror ones of Kirby crime. And I think this was sort of like the big overall sort of, this has to be one of the best Simon and Kirby books of all time. This is just, actually, I've done a review of this, I'm quite certain. This one, more than 350 pages of original art, some rare and unpublished. I mean, it's a 
thick, chunky book. And this is from Abraham's Comic Art. Now, again, another company, a bit like Herma, that I think produce brilliant books. This company also brings out some absolutely amazing books. And this one, Abraham's one, is probably some of the best. I mean, it's just full of just page after page of Kirby masterpieces all the way through it. If you're going to look for any Kirby book, I think this one is definitely a must. So it's got here afterward by J Jim Simon and also, of course, selected and edited by Mark Evanier. Really, really good book. And it weighs a ton. Oh, just going to move it over there. Probably all those books will collapse on me. This one is a lovely Les Daniels, another Les Daniel books. I love these ones, 60 years. I don't know if they brought out a recent one, if it's a 70 year one or whatever, but this one is like the history of DC Comics. I really love this one. It's a really nice book, full of obviously lots and lots of examples of Black Hawk and other ones, obviously Wonder Woman, Sensation Comics, going all the way through to TV, Venture Club, and so on. So it's a really nice, really quality book. Now, of course, there was a Marvel one as well he did, which was really good. I don't think I've got a copy of that. I'm certain I haven't. But this one right here, the DC story complete. I've read it, but uh, years and years ago. This one's got 600 illustrations in full colour. Hero, sidekicks, villains. And it really does cover a lot of characters like Plastic Man, Robot Man, many fairly obscure ones, not just the usual suspects, which is always the thing that always slightly bugs me in books. They always concentrate on Superman, Batman, the obvious ones, which are fine because everyone loves them. But I do like it when they do sort of pick you know, pick someone that's sort of like Mr. Terrific or something, or the Sandman or something, not the earlier Sandman, not the later one. This one's quite amazing. I really love icon painting, all these sort of things. And this one, Yaslav, Yaroslavian, my apologies, I've said that completely wrong. But this one is a really beautiful book. Now, I guess that this, I bought this from my local Oxfam shop, 199. As soon as sort of you see this sort of book, you know, probably, I will never see a book like this ever again. It will never turn up. And, of course, I probably could find it online, of course. I'm certain I could, but that's not the point. It's actually got it, in, obviously, there. And you can see it's in English as well, <laughs> thankfully, because I would never be able to work it out. But it's got very some really small... I mean, that's ridiculously small, isn't it? However, you've actually got a lot bigger later on. And it's just full and full of just beautiful pictures. Really, really, I love these sort of books. The artwork is superb. I've got quite a few icon books, these sorts of things. Now, most of these are like about 12, 70, 1300s, 1400s, that sort of period. So they're not really like very, very early, like seventh or sixth century. And But I still just love looking at all the, you can see all the various buildings and the various, obviously the imagery is just amazing all the way through that. Glorious. Ooh, put that up there. This one's a really weird one. Victorian and Edwardian popular entertainment posters. Fun without vulgarity. I love these sort of books. I really, really do. Because they're just, you can see there on the back cover, you've got all the Charlie's Aunt, Moore, what's it, Moore and Berg Borges. You've got uh, Runaway Girl, all the various posters, zebras and zebras and uh, baboons. <laughs> The sort of thing that were all over the place. Really unusual posters. And you got some information about the posters. Obviously in full colour. Now I think they're all mainly in colour. This was an exhibition. Would have been a brilliant exhibition to have seen. We loved it. I assume the posters were a lot larger than the ones in this book. But still quite a sizeable sized book. I liked it. I know some people put comments saying it wasn't as good as it could have been. I thought it was pretty impressive. But still maybe they could have been brighter, sharper. I don't know. But it was still... Fascinating. I don't know what this one is. Obviously, they're going escape from a prison. But that's just a lovely period, loads of designs that I've, I've never seen any like that. The Norman Rockwell Treasury. This is a lovely book. Thomas S. Buchner. I assume that's how you say it. And this is just full of just, obviously, all the various ones from various things like Saturday Evening Post. Again, post again. You've got loads and loads of examples. I think pretty decent, not, could have been sharp, and there's a lot of black and white ones where I think they probably, maybe, I don't know, maybe they were in black and white, maybe that's, I'm not really certain why they went for black and white for these ones. I say some are in black and white, oil paintings, the oil paintings I assume were in colour, so there are black and white for it, but still a really, really nice book. I think I got it for 50p at my local market, and uh, 
Norman Rockwell, pretty impressive. Not one of my favourite artists, but still, I love that sort of period of artwork. And I've got quite a few sort of evening posts and those ones, and they're always great to look at. I loved this exhibition. This was Discover Manor. And it's, is this still on? It might still be on. It might have finished by now. I don't know. This is at the National. I think it could still be on. Discover Manet and Eva Gonzalez. And I just love this exhibition. This is one of the best, just beautiful paintings. And also had lots of examples of her work as well. It wasn't just Manet, which would have been disappointing if it had just been Manet. This was, and there was lots of other artists as well, female artists that I've never seen before. Some great works. Now this book doesn't, you know, it's obviously slightly probably different from the exhibition quite often. These sort of when you go to an exhibition, sometimes the artwork you see in the exhibition doesn't always match the ones in the book. It's never a one-to-one, -one, I don't think, sometimes. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But it's just great. I love these sort of ones where they show like the x-rays and sort of where it sort of sees, you know, shows the difference, the underlying layers, how it was drawn and redrawn and redrawn and redrawn. Just fascinating, though. So watched a wonderful documentary on the National Gallery website on there. Uh, they do a Zoom sessions, and it was just discussing all these things, painting techniques, etc. It was fascinating. And this, I love it. I mean, this one here, Le Brun. I've done a painting, that one. Done a drawing, not painting, a drawing, I should say. <laughs> Would have been nice to do a painting, but no. Went to the National Gallery, and they did a talk and draw. And we did her. It was uh, Elizabeth Louise... Vijay Piquet, Le Brun, probably said her name completely wrong, 1791. But still, beautiful, beautiful, nice thin book and reasonably priced, and which is good when sometimes, I always think these catalogues at various galleries, sometimes you can get it and it's like 35 pounds or 40 pounds and you think, well, it's about twice the price of going to see the exhibition, which just becomes insane. I think it's nice to have one for about 10 pounds and you think, you know what? You go to an exhibition for about, whatever this one, it's obviously, it's a free exhibition. I'm certain it's a free one. Might be completely wrong on that. I've got a membership for National Gallery, so I don't always remember whether it's free or not. But still, National Gallery, it's nice when you get these sort of things. And I think it's when you go to exhibitions, it would be nice if they did a combination thing so you could buy the, or get the what's name to go and see it. And then you'd also get the book at a slightly different price, slightly reduced price. Because sometimes I say, they are so expensive. But this is a beautiful one. Of course, you can see it's soft paperback, but a lovely quality book. I wish there were more books about her artwork. Very few. And what ones I've found are collections of these sort of ones that you've got, you know, 300 pictures. Now, I have no idea about the quality. They're not publishers that I know about. And I like to buy I must. When it comes to art books, it's nice to buy ones that, that I know that I bought in the past. You know that they're going to be real quality books. A National Gallery generally always bring nice quality books out, and this one certainly is. I think that's going to be part of a series, this sort of style, and I hope they do, because I think that's great. And this one's a lovely one, Impressionists at Home, full of some really, really brilliant books. Thames and Hudson generally always bring out really good books. I love this one, so it's a nice got lots and lots of pictures obviously of them at home and showing their homes and things and also lots of different artists Ren, obviously the usual suspects Renoir, Whistler etc but you've also got Berth Morisot really really love some of her pictures actually I love all her pictures I wish there were more books about her education this we've got here Chase, Renoir, Sicily, Morisot again and so on beautiful book real nice collection Oh, that's a run through of that shelf. <laughs> I've got quite a few other shelves. Some, let's say, are comic ones. Some more are going to be more art ones. I think there's a, a mix of this one. But some sort of might be, maybe not obviously of interest to everyone, but hopefully there's something in this. And please put in the comments below if there's any books you want me to go through and maybe do a bit more of a review on. Also, just put comments. Have you got the books yourself? Are you interested in getting the books? It'd be great to know. And also some suggestions of other books maybe related to some of these artists. Maybe you've got ones and you think, you know, just find out more about this or that. You know, obscure like Bulgarian artwork or something. Or maybe, you know, whole loads of different ones that I don't really know about. It's always great to hear. So I hope you found this of interest. Thank you much. Bye.